Hi, today I'll be talking about switches. More specifically, this is a Ubiquiti, it's a USW Pro 48, as the name suggests. It is a 48 port switch, and you would need this mainly in a data center or in a rather larger environment. So it's not really aimed at the uh, home user or the very small business. However, uh, you may as a small business still require more than the usual, uh, let's say 16 or 24 port this would be something to go to. So I use various brands and I'm not paid or compensated by any of these companies. I uh, just happen to be uh, working with Ubiquiti right now on some projects. And so uh, this is one of them. Let's go ahead and unbox it. So I, I really like the uh, plain, uh, I guess cardboard looking uh, box basically so let's go ahead and you simply pull on it I guess they took a bit of a hint from uh, Apple and it opens up and let's see what's inside of this box so really let's see so you've got a smaller box on the outside and you've got some foam there so let's take a look this is most likely the power supply and so first you've got the usual uh, cable and there is uh, actually the rest is for rack mounting and this is let's see what this is you've got some oh very nice you got a little kit here uh, with all the screws so you've got for rack mounting and for putting in the sides and some rubber feet so you got a nice little kit here and the rest are really what well, I like to call the ears but are just the uh, the brackets on the side so I'm going to put this aside and of course it is pretty much as large of a switch as you can get from a port density point of view. And you'll see why I say that in a moment. So in a typical rack, uh, they count things in U's. So for units. So this is a 1U and specifically Ubiquiti sells this as a a near silent uh, cooling, meaning that it's not excessively noisy. Let's go ahead and take a look. Like most switches, what you'll find is there's very, actually there's nothing on the sides. So both sides. And in the back, really you'll find at this point, the power and the business end is right here. So what you'll find are gigabit ports in the front. So that's the speed of it. And the other thing is you'll find the SFP plus um, here on the right. And I believe, let me just make sure. So usually you take these out and as you'll see, they're basically holes. So unlike the typical uh, cables that would just plug in here, you need an adapter. Uh, the other thing that's interesting here is there is a little LED or LCD uh, display and that will actually give you some information and it is uh, touch sensitive so it's a touch screen you can go ahead and see things like the IP address uh, and so forth the nice thing about Ubiquiti and, and a lot of other brands uh, have this as well so it's not unique um, I think they were one of the, uh, the first ones to really make a, a nice display uh, is you have the ability to use either a mobile phone to go and manage this uh, so they have an application or you can use uh, a network or a, a, yeah, basically a network application that uh, you can load. There's also a unit that you could purchase, which is basically a small controller. It's a physical and it basically plugs into one of the ports and it does require power as well. And if you if you do require power to be coming from the switch then you'd be looking for a poe switch we'll make another video with one of those so that you get an idea as to what that looks like um, from a expandability point of view i mean that's what the whole point of these holes the sfp plus is let's say you wanted to have uh, multiple switches or you wanted to anyway there's very let's say you wanted to have more than one switch what you could do is go ahead and use actually i've got some right here so fiber modules so what they would do is one would go in this one the other one would go in the other switch and then you would use a fiber optic cable 
to plug from one to the other. What does the actual adapter look like? It looks something like this. So what you would do is basically just put one of these, as you can see, it's very small and it simply slips in. And what you would do for the fiber specifically, and of course you want to take it out, there's a little lever here, probably hard to see, and you simply pull it out. And it's like a little handle if you want. And so what you would do is there's little caps that come on the end of it. So you take the little caps off, actually I've taken it off on this end, and then you simply insert it. And it's real easy to do. And then let me just see, make sure I got the right side like this and it usually clips right in and now I think I'm doing this backwards. Yes, I am. There we go. Okay, so you have to actually close and then you would simply push it in like this. So it, it clips in. If you want to unclip it, you press and pull. And of course you would do that once it's in the unit. Now, if you wanted to, to go with copper, so copper is the typical type of network cable that you're probably more used to. Uh, there are various categories of wires. So I'm going to talk about them because it is rather important. If you wanted to have uh, 10G going from uh, one switch to the other, in my example, then what you want is a very good cable. Of course, they are rather short, so you will get away with uh, using lower categories. But what you, you probably want to get is a 6, category 6 and above. Uh, this is a 6A and it's shielded. And you can tell because it's got the um, the metal sides here and what you would do is you would actually get an SFP plus module and I don't know if you can see this one very well but it basically looks like the rest of the ports but this is 10G instead of being 1G so what you would do is insert this and you would simply plug it in like this and the other end would go into a similar module on the other switch and that's all there is to it so let me actually put it in here and yeah, that should be right. This is what happens when you're upside down. Okay, so basically it just creates an extra port for you here, which you would plug in, and that would be it. So at the end, you're basically looking at this port now being 10G. And of course, there's more spaces here, so you could use uh, three more of these. And you could also have a combination of both fiber and copper. Um, the highest category right now it's available is category 8. Um, so I mean, you, you can, depending on the price of course, uh, and if they're very uh, short runs like this, they're probably not very expensive. So you probably want to get the best cable you can. Uh, there's no reason not to. Sometimes we're talking like, you know, 50 cents a dollar extra, a couple dollars. It all depends again on where you are, how much it costs. So you can stack quite a few of these, of course, in an environment. Generally, these will be housed in a rack. Uh, if you have an open rack, so it, it's called an H-frame, and I don't have one here with me to show you, but basically it's a piece of metal, a just large piece of metal. The standard size is 42 U's, which means that you could, in theory, have 42 of these stacked up. Uh, I don't know anybody who does that. Uh, plus, you probably would end up with heating issues if you had that many. Um, and most places will have a closed racks, so you'll have doors uh, both behind and in front, and that's usually the way to do it. So I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you uh, want to encourage us. That's always appreciated. So I'm Bob Pelloin, CTO Bob. You can visit us at www.ctobob.com, and of course, leave comments below if you enjoy this, if this was useful, uh, what you might want to say or what other brands you're using. Uh, we work with a whole lot of uh, different manufacturers over time on projects and uh, we'll try to bring you up to speed on different models and different capabilities. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.